good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to anyone that's new um i we i we because there is a we we've got pete behind me there so me and pete are here at shakespeare beach dover again uh the clocks went back forward went forward last night so um lost an hour of sleep um, didn't want to get up much earlier than this we're nearly at high we're probably 40 minutes short of high so we're only going to do a short session maybe three four hours fishing this from high uh, as it ebbs back down hoping fingers crossed hoping for a ray should get a ray i hope and see what else is about we've got some uh, frozen blacks we're going to see what we can get with that and then we're going to put a ray bait out as well a bit gloomy today it's um very misty, quite a lot of um, quite a lot of moisture in the air, a bit drizzly, and I don't think it's going to get that warm today. It's been warm previous days, but today it's going to be pretty much like this. There's a bit of a, a swell coming in from around the Admiralty. You can see it there, just rolling as it comes round the corner there, and it's rolling into the beach. There are a group of three fishermen beyond Pete in the distance and one's getting up now he's got a bite and he's bending down by his rod so there's a bite going on down there so we need to get set up and get our rods in to see if we can get bites too so the first rod that I'm setting up is the Synetic Cross Power Heavy that's four and a half meters long so that's the 450 version and that is paired with a Synetic Cyclone black reel and on this reel as with the other reel I'm fishing with braided line so this has got I think it's got 25 pound braid and then it goes to a 32 kilo leader which is Synetic Skyline because it is extremely uh, thin low in diameter for the braking strain I haven't had it crack yet and it's a lot thinner than uh, leader material on the market so it just gives me a little bit of an advantage there now one of the main reasons i fish with braid is because of its lower diameter than mono which gives you that advantage it's less drag in the air when i'm casting so i want to go with the lowest diameter line that i can to get that extra distance when i need it so i'd always prefer to go thinner braid with a leader than to just go heavy braid all the way through and i never use a braided leader just because of the added stress without the stretch in the line when you're really whacking into a cast that lack of stretch or elasticity of the line just puts a lot of stress on these continental style rods so i don't like doing that with braid because you can snap the tip of the rod um, i always use a mono leader and thin braids so on the second rod that's the sonic gravity ht i take that everywhere it's got the shimano altegra matched up onto it and it's also got a casting cannon fixed to it i like to cast with that especially when i'm doing off the ground casts that has got thinner braid that's on 20 pound braid again on 32 kilo leader synetic skyline and all i'm going to do now once they're set up is put the two rigs on right before pete comes over and disturbs me oh he's stopped he stopped he's turning around he's like oh, i won't disturb you i'm only joking i think he's coming to get bait so i'll be quick um the two rigs that i am putting on my rod are today they're going to be a pulley dropper rig which is here in front of me a little bit tangled i've just got the weight clipped on it so we'll start there we've got 170 170 because there can be quite a bit of uh, tide pull here at shakespeare beach it's quite a deep beach and basically that's got um that's on 60 pound fluorocarbon rig body and as you can see there i've got the the swivel at the top that's the loose swivel that the end of the hook snood clips up to so there's the hook snood there with that clip your main line clips onto that swivel there so that's your main line clipped onto there 
that then comes over and clips the top of the hook snood in place like so that will be clipped in place there like that and then my hook snood is 40 pound fluorocarbon both synthetic mimetic and this just allows me to pull it stretch it back to being straight it's got no memory so I can just get all the kinks out and that's got two six o's on it Sakuma six o's Sakuma Manta six o hooks they're gonna get baited up with fish bait sardine bluey I don't know and then when that clips down it clips onto the imp just like so and then it's all streamlined when you're casting out so I'm gonna get that on the synthetic cross power and on the other rod I've got a rig that I don't use very often I'm using it today again 170 using a 170 and it's basically your three hook flapper but I've got bait clips on this I've got my um, homemade paper clip bait clips so I've got bait clips on each one each snood so we've basically got a three hook clip rig and I'm just gonna work um, bait that up with blacks frozen blacks tip with squid just to scratch around see if I can get a bite from anything else and above each hook I've got a tiny bit of uh, sequin and a bait stopper there that just stops the worm flying up the hook snood when you're casting out so I'm gonna get both of these on the rods now and then get baited up morning Peter morning all uh, so Pete's with me he's just come over to show me his bait because he's uh, trying to uh, master the bait presentation and look at that so he has done a bit of surgery he's opened up a squid he's stuffed it with some blacks and then he's bait elastic it all back up so he's basically got a squid stuffed with the uh, rolled blacks haven't you Pete that's correct yeah. get that on a pulley rig pulley rig and uh Hope we get something. Hope we get something. Well, it looks very appetising, yeah. mate. It looks very good. Yeah. There we are. Very neat. Right. Yeah, very good presentation. Nice and straight. Nothing bulging. No. Very good, mate. Okay. Thank you, you get that done. I'll get mine baited up. Right. So on my uh, pulley dropper rig, this is what I've got. I've got a tail of a small bluey. There we go. That is probably about three inches long. I've got half a side of mackerel. Been in my freezer for a bit. Hopefully it's still all right. Could be complacency coming in again here with my bait, but I think it's okay. Um, it should be good enough for a ray anyway. I'm gonna put them together like that. And then I'm just gonna bait elastic of them together before we get them on the hook. All right, there we go. Bait elastic from top to tail. And what we're going to go and do is get that onto the hooks and then a little bit more bait elastic. The simplest way, this is all bait elastic up. It's a bit too thick to get a hook all the way through. So I'm basically just going to come round and back out at the base, like so. I'm going to bait elastic that on first. Just try and get the top of that hook, the eye, down flat, like so. And a little bit round the curve as it comes out so it stops it ripping it back up through the bait there we go and when i get to the top that will go through the other side so i'm just going to go straight through both baits out the other side pull the line tight there we got a hook that side at the base and a hook at the bottom get that section nice and secure to the shank of the hook and again try and tuck some under stop that ripping through and there we go got a nice bait there ready for a ray so i'm going to get that clipped up and get that out So on the second rod, it's pretty simple. We're going with frozen blacks. I'm gonna uh, thread on a few, 
because that I might need uh, two of them there. These are literally in my freezer for emergencies. I like to fish fresh all the time, but um, when I can't get to the bait shop or, or just haven't got time, I like to have some uh, frozen blacks in the freezer for those rainy days. I've put four on there and I think that's going to do two snoods out of the three. There we go. Two worms on that. I'm going to tip that. Put a bit of squid in a minute. But first of all, we'll get some on this one as well. Like so. Pull the stop down, then what I'm gonna do, do the bottom one, then get the squid on it. So last but not least, tipping it off with squid, and then we clip these up as we go down. So that's one. Tip that off with a bit of squid, about an inch long, inch long section. That's number two, clip down. And the bottom one's here. The same there. Squid on there. Clip that down. So finally, Pete's and my baits are out. Or my, my baits and Pete's baits are out. Whatever way it should go, I'm not really sure. Um, covering quite a lot of bases. And we're covering even more bases now because someone else has turned up. Um, I didn't think he would because the clocks went forward. He's bad enough at getting up anyway. And he's managed to get up today. He just come down to the beach. I was like, oh, hello. We have Mark here. Morning all, how are we doing? You got it you got a pretty pretty good time as well, didn't you? Yeah. And apparently he's been out all night, so I can't can't remember getting here, but there I'm we here. are. There we are. If policemen are watching this, he's joking. No, 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 he's no, joking. No, he's yes. joking. Right, so Mark, what are you going for? Oh he's got I've fish got and one. squid bait on there. A bit of bluey. Right. Just gonna chuck a couple of them out, mate. You're gonna chuck a couple of them out. Sit there, that's thanks for eight. Uh, uh, breakfast or is that a lot, is it still a late night snack? Uh, that counts as breakfast. Breakfast now. Right, well, let's hope. Six six rods out in the water, we should have a chance of a fish. This is quiet. We have probably had baits in the water an hour. And none of us have had a knock yet. Um, sounds like, it sounds like the night was um, quite doggy heavy. Um, apparently a chap down there had done the night, had a ray or two and then dozens of dogfish. So, um, it's fish about well there was fish about but it doesn't look like they're about now the sun's come up and they're not on the feed but we've only been here an hour we are only going to do about three but uh, I'd hoped it would start a bit better than this especially being just after high I was hoping to get maybe a ray or two still a bit of time yet so let's hope something comes in as the tide ebbs. Let's 
get a fresh bite on this. Well, I'm not clipping this up this time because I'm only going to go short range ish, short ish. The water is gin clear. It is gin clear here. So let's hope we do catch something. I might be able to get some good underwater footage. But let's just get this out. I'm going to try and go to just where the ripple edge is. There it goes exactly where I wanted it. I'll take that. Right, I'm going to keep it very simple. I've got a sardine. So it doesn't seem to be much nuisance stuff out there and I do like sardine for the scent that it puts out. So I am basically taking that off there. And I'm going to basically just put that tail section on. So that is going to get branded to my rod now, to the rig. And see if we can get anything on that. Lovely. He's got a fish. You got a fish, mate? You've got something. Right, he thinks he's got... He thinks he might have a doggy here. Why is this not doing up, though? Oh, he's in already. Oh, he's got a fish. He's... Oh, he's done it. He's... Look at that. He's got a cold fish. <laughs> oh, I tell you, mate. Some weird things come up on Shakespeare Beach. Now that has just made the video. Yeah. You got a cold fish. Wow. There we are. Cold fish at Dover. On a cold day, isn't it? <laughs> right, Mark, you need a photo of that. Let me just get this. That has just been fairly hooked. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. Get that up. Hold that up, mate. Look at that. Well done, mate. No, I mean mate. that. For here, that is a special catch. Seriously. That is awesome. Right, let me get my phone. We'll get a picture of that because that is an awesome catch. Well done, mate. Well, that doesn't matter if you don't catch anything else. That is a pretty good catch from a Kent Beach. A coalfish off of Shakespeare Beach at Dover. I don't think there are many people out there that have had coalfish. Um, pollock, yes, there's pollock about, but um, I've never heard of a coalfish being caught. So, um, fair play. I'd be over the moon with that from Dover catching a cold fish. Made this video really <laughs> because other than that, there is not a lot happening. It is quiet. Pete's just changing his baits. Whilst we're sitting here watching our rods. Anyway. 
impressive catch. Let's just hope we get maybe a, another fish or two. But I think Mark's happy, and so he should be. Right, let's bring this in. Oh. That feels heavy. Why is that heavy? I've had one little nod on this, but... I um, didn't do anything else than a little nod, but there's something on this. What is on this? Is it weed? Or is it a big crab? We got a big crab. Not even a big one, but we got a crab. Hey! Here's a slight wind up that uh, 10 minutes ago Mark has a coal fish. And then I bring in this velvet swimming crab. They got red joints. So let's have a look. You can see the red joints down there. Just in the legs. And they got this lovely bluey purple hue. Right, we're getting back. And get rebaited. <laughs> So last cast with this three up clip rig and I've changed the bait up a bit. So I've got a small sausage of sardine on there tipped with a little bit of squid. That's all the way down there and there. Let's see if that makes a difference because they do not like the frozen lug at all. So Pete has brought his rigs in, what, for the last time is it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's for his last time. Pretty much untouched and they've been out a while, haven't they? Uh, an hour, well over an hour. Yeah, there's not a lot going on out there. There's the odd fish swimming around and that is it. But we've given it a good shot, haven't we, Pete? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring one of mine in now. I'm going to leave the sardine on the three at flapper for five or ten minutes more. Oh, oh, we had a bite then, we had a bite then, we had a bite then, got a bite on it. Oh, we, we got something. We've got a fish. We've got a fish on the sweet flapper. And I think, I think it's a ray. I think I've got a ray on the sweet flapper. Let's have a look. Yeah, I've got a fish on here, mate. I was filming some uh, seagulls. Oh no, I've just lost it, yeah? No, don't think so. 
Come on, mate. Here it comes. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. What is it? Is it a doggy? It's a doggy. It's a doggy. Oh, I thought it was a little ray. But we've got a dogfish. There it is. I've never been so happy to see a dogfish before. Look at that. Last cast, that has saved a blank. It really has. Um, not gonna keep him, I'm gonna put him back. So I'll just video this going back, get a nice release on that. But I'm happy with that. Save my blank. Well, we are slowly packing up after that dogfish. I've put that rod back out, but my other rod is away. That's packed up. The first one always to give up, to quit, is Pete. I'm not a quitter. He is a quitter. He's always first to have his two rods in. Tell me I'm lying. No, dude, yeah, I'm pretty quick at packing up. He's quick at packing up. Me and Mark are still fishing. Anyway, we are pretty much we're just seeing what this does for the next 10 two, 15 minutes two or three hours, two or three hours he says <laughs> but it has apart from mark's cold fish which was uh, pretty amazing for shakespeare beach for kent um it's been pretty abysmal but we'll give it 15 more minutes and see what happens all right we got a bite on here There we go. So I'm gonna go like this. Still there, mate? Yeah, he's still there. Oh, oh. I think I missed it. I've missed it. I think I've missed it. We've got a seal out there, we've got a seal out there, have we? We have got a seal. How did I miss that? I don't know if you can see that. There he is, he's about 50 yards. Big seal. Well, that is us done. Mark's there, Pete's there, and despite most of that session being very poor, I did get a doggy in the end. But Mark, there he is, man of the moment, with his cold fish. Mr. Cold fish. Mr. Cold, cold fish. <laughs> and a cold one. But you're happy with that, aren't you, mate? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, very good catch, mate. Well done. Um, we like this venue and I've said it before and I think I've said it before in other videos Shakespeare Beach can really throw up the unusual or um, yeah something that's really not that common from the beach so to get a cold fish in Kent here yeah, it's pretty good pretty good going um, so that's made the session for all of us really next time we'll be somewhere different targeting something different and until that time because I'm out of breath tight lines